going to start here with the New England Patriots training camp with the Carolina Panthers. Things got a little bit interesting uh, during practice today, uh, later in uh, the 11-on-11s. 11 um, let me play a clip for you and show you exactly what happened. I always love the quarterbacks just like walking away from the brawl. Just Hoyer and Mac Jones saying, all right, I'm not getting involved. And if they did get involved, they would get punished. So they, they did the right thing there. Uh, but things got a little bit chippy at the first joint practice for the Patriots uh, this training camp. Uh, they're starting with a joint practice week with Carolina, a preseason game to wrap it up this Friday. And the next week they'll be traveling to Las Vegas to do another joint practice session uh, with the Raiders before they wrap up um, a pre their final preseason game. Uh, there in Nevada. Uh, but basically what happened here, uh, Mac Jones uh, threw an out route to Kendrick Wilkerson um, near the Panthers sideline and uh, you know uh, Wilkerson came up with the ball or missed it or whatever and then one of the assistant coaches on the Carolina side uh, gave Wilkerson a little bit of a nudge which you know it's one thing if a opponent does that but when one of the coaches does that to you and I, I don't get the idea he pushed him or shoved him or anything just gave him a little nudge like get back onto the field well Wilker Wilkerson did not respond well to that so he stepped back began trash talking to the assistant and a bunch of the players and that's when all hell broke loose um, players went after Wilkerson pushing and shoving and then what ultimately ended up happening, Kendrick Bourne, perhaps New England's most vocal and enthusiastic skill position player, joined and just started throwing punches. He just started throwing haymakers, and things got a little crazy, and that's what you saw in that clip there. Um, so both Wilkerson and Kendrick Bourne were kicked out of practice, along with uh, Panther safety Kenny Robinson. And then later in practice, I believe a few plays later, uh, Pat's backup center James Ference and defensive tackle Phil Hoskins of the Panthers both got tossed after they got in a scuffle of their own. So quite the start to training camp. Now these types of fights are not unusual and it's better they take place against an opposing team than within the team. We have seen a little bit of you know, smaller skirmishes break out throughout Patriots training camp. There's been some much bigger ones around the league. There's always a lot of chippiness going on, um, especially early on in training camp when things get physical and the pads get put on. Um, but then when you bring another team into the mix, then it gets a little bit crazy. The Patriots aren't playing the Panthers this year um, other than the preseason game. Um, so this is a good test uh, to see just how they face off against other opponents and look fighting is not something you want to see your team doing that said it's good to see the pats actually getting a little bit physical in practice um, it's been a fairly low key training camp so far at least relative to the tom brady days especially the early tom brady days when they were doing you know two a day practices and stuff the the teams hardly practice for more than a couple hours nowadays today they went almost three hours and uh, it got pretty intense. But so far in training camp, before today, there's been far more off days than usual, far more than they, the uh, teams are legally required to have by um, NFL rules. Um, there's been a lot of practicing in shells, not pads, and a lot of low-intensity practices because the Patriots are basically trying to learn a new uh, offense with some of these wide zone concepts. And because of that, because it's been... A real challenge trying to bring these concepts into their system uh, that they've had to slow things down a little bit while other teams around the league are ramping things up but finally today and I've seen this report from a number of different people who are at training camp the Patriots did match the energy of the Carolina Panthers so it's good to hear that the Patriots are up to the level of Carolina I know that's not something to brag about but it has been such a low-key training camp and there's been so many bad reports about you know them having trouble with the offensive line with the communication getting the zone run going uh, and the bootlegs and the play actions off of those concepts it's been a real struggle so the Patriots had some success there today um, with some of those new wide zone concepts the O-line held up generally pretty well and 
Um, you know, Damian Harris, Ramondre Stevenson, they were consistently getting short gains. The O-line was communicating a lot better. Mac Jones went to play action at one point and hit Jacoby Myers down the field for about 15 to 20 yards. Um, and that's something we really haven't seen. You know, they're, they're trying to mix in the zone run and run the ball a lot more. But what really makes it exciting is the passing game and what you can do off of that with defenses trying to make those adjustments um, and stopping that. And then you can run these play actions, these bootlegs, and throw downfield. And Patriots are pushing the ball downfield a lot more than we've seen them really do since the Randy Moss days. Um, And they did that today in practice against the Carolina Panthers, which really is a testament to how much the O-line has improved just in the last week or two. I mean, this time last week we were saying, I think it was Monday last week, the Patriots had their worst practice at training camp by far. People had just said it was brutal. Mac Jones, you know, in his red jersey was getting sacked. In other words, a two-hand touch um, on every play because the O-line just could not communicate. They could not incorporate these concepts. And we didn't see any of these new concepts in their preseason game against the Giants last week. So they're testing that a lot more. And as Bill Belichick said, you know these joint practices they really see them as an extension to their preseason games NFL teams are only playing three preseason games now and they also don't really want to do a lot because they're going to be showing all the teams around the league all the different things that they're doing which explains why they stayed kind of they stuck kind of with the old offense last week Um, so a lot of new concepts being shown against Carolina Um, it looks like there were a lot of improvements there Um, Pat's pushing the ball down the field more, having a little more success with the running game, introducing the zone run. It did break down a little bit toward the end of practice on a few throwaways, a few checkdowns that didn't work out. Um, Mac Jones was actually forced to do a Hail Mary um, and was picked downfield. Um, So not great there, um, but overall a huge improvement from what we saw last week. And you'd expect to see the Pats improve quite a bit. And it'll be interesting to see when they go to Vegas next week. And, you know, Josh McDaniels, who alongside uh, former O-line coach Dante Dante Skarnecchia, was pushing back against introducing some of these new concepts. Now Belichick has brought it to New England. And, you know, we know Belichick loves to make adjustments. And he doesn't like to be rigid, which it sounds like Josh McDaniels was, who basically ran the offense uh, for the last decade or so. Um, and, and before that, before his stint in Denver. Um, so it's going to be really interesting to see what happens there in Vegas next week when the Patriots start running all these bootleg plays, these things that Josh McDaniels never would have done, particularly with Matt being kicked out um, in, in uh, Tuesday's practice. Uh, a few other notes. Malcolm Butler has not been seen on the practice field um, since the Pats preseason game on Thursday last week. Um, obviously, the Pats did not practice Friday through Sunday. Their first practice was yesterday, Monday, and their first one uh, against Carolina on Tuesday. Um, we'll see if he's back out for Wednesday, but it'll be interesting because you know Malcolm Butler looked okay in in that first preseason game. Um, gave up a couple chunk plays. He's definitely more of a red zone defender, most famously in the Super Bowl, uh, but. Um, You know, what does this mean? There's a lot of depth there at the defensive back positions. Terrence Mitchell looks to be the guy. Jack Jones, the guy they drafted, um, really looks like he's starting caliber material. Maybe not right away, but certainly down the road. Um, So what will that mean for Malcolm Butler if he's not playing as well as these guys, especially after taking a year off? Could we see him cut? Um, Or is this just, you know, maybe he tweaked an ankle or there was some sort of injury we don't know about and that's why he's not practicing? Um, We'll see what happens there. Isaiah Wynn also still hasn't been seen. He missed another practice today. We don't really know what happened with him. We're just kind of assuming there was an injury there. Uh, There's rumors about maybe there's some contract issues. Um, I'm not sure the Pats want to re-sign him. That said, very difficult to find starting caliber tackles in today's NFL. Um, So uh, if you know something about Isaiah Wynn, please let us know in the comments because I have no idea. And then last note, um, former Raiders GM uh, Mike Mayock was at practice. Um, I wonder if we'll see him involved with the organization at some point. Um, Kevin Anderson, uh, former uh, player development coach in New England, uh, coached under Mike Pat- uh, Matt Patricia with the Detroit Lions, was in Detroit last year while Patricia was back in New England. He seems to be getting involved. 
So the Patriots have a very small coaching staff. They've been stretched thin. Obviously, Matt Patricia taking on multiple roles, coaching the O-line, um, which has been a bumpy road thus far and is basically the de facto o, um, offensive coordinator um, as the play caller. Um, may or may not be competing with Mike, uh, Joe Judge for that role, uh, but it looks like the Pats are trying to make some moves to expand that coaching staff with folks that have been in Foxborough before. Um, so a lot to watch out for there.